Hey, I'm Joe Farrell with Geek Toolkit and welcome to my follow-up for my Samsung The Frame TV video. I made that video because the Samsung Frame TV just had a lot of cool things about it that I wanted to share with you. And a lot of you had a lot of questions for me. So what I wanted to do is create a follow-up where I answer the questions a little bit more in depth than I have in the comments. Also talk about some of the things I learned and even a couple of things that I got wrong in the last video that I've learned since then. In-wall rating comes from the NEC, which comes from basically a fire code. It has nothing to do with the data going through the line or if it's power or not necessarily. It really has to do with how does it react in a fire. So there were a lot of commenters that said, hey, I ran mine through the wall and it worked fine. That's not what in-wall rating is about. In-wall rating is about how does it react if there were a fire in the home, hopefully not, but if there was, does it start burning and cause a poisonous fume? Does it burn super fast? Stuff like that. So that's what it means about in-wall rating uh, of the cable. The cable is recommended to be run through two inch conduit. That was another fact that I was getting where people are asking how thick should the conduit be? I've done some research. It's a one inch end. Uh, to properly be able to route it, you're gonna want two inch conduit for that. So the conduit you can run through the wall and that will provide the in-wall fire protection that you would need, provided you have in-wall rated conduit that you'd run the cable through. That's how that stuff works. Now I know, now you know. Another question I got a lot, why is mine mounted so high? My fireplace is down here. I know you can't see that, but below the frame of my fireplace, I'll do this. I will take pictures further back showing you what this wall looks like, and it may make more sense. This room is a, it, it's an open space house that we built it, or what do they call it? Op open space design? We live in a open space design house. I don't know if that's a thing, but anyway, the kitchen and the living room are one giant space. I can see this TV when I'm washing dishes, which is really cool, honestly. The thing is to know, yes, that TV is mounted high, it's mounted above a fireplace. People have asked me, have I watched a lot of TV on this? I absolutely have. I just got through the last season of Cobra Kai, love that show. Uh, Star Trek Discovery I'm working through, I'm almost to the finale. I, I decided to not do the finale and do this video instead, so. Uh, please don't spoil it. I hope to watch that soon. And I'll list off some of the shows I've watched off to the side here, but I've watched a number of shows, like Netflix series. I've watched a number of movies on here. I've watched the, uh, actually went back, watched the Avengers on here. I love that. It's been great. It's been an absolutely great experience. It's super bright. The colors look good to me. Uh, the height hasn't bothered me at all. I think it, you know, when I, I sit down, I lean back a little bit because the way our couch is designed, TV's tilted a little bit down. For me, it's just a very nice experience. <laughs> How high is the TV mounted? Mine is five foot five. I sit 12 feet back. Your mileage may vary. I saw a lot of tutorials out there that said mount the TV at eye height. So, you know, for me, I mount the TV in this case where I had to, but sometimes I mount the TV just where it's comfortable for me. I think that's what matters more than anything. If you say, I followed this guide and the TV is not comfortable, then really, who cares, right? So. So one thing I want to show about this TV that I didn't talk about that I've discovered in my eight months of using it is on the remote, there's Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Hulu at the bottom of the remote there. Watch this. Netflix? Boom. It's in Netflix. Amazon Prime? It's in Amazon Prime. It's very, very fast for those two. Hulu? Not so much. I'm not even going to demo it. It's like five or six seconds and it starts spinning. The other thing that's really fast at is the last thing it was on. So we watch a lot of Disney because I have a daughter. So if I get to Disney, typically that loads up pretty quickly. So the first time looks like this and then it kind of caches it. So from there, again, if I go to Netflix, there's Netflix, very fast. Amazon Prime, very fast. If I go back to Disney, it stays cached. It's very quick that time. So it seems to keep like the last three or four, but Netflix and Amazon Prime always seem to be in memory and they load up super fast. It's been, it's been impressive. I want to summarize something about this TV that I tried to explain in the last video that I don't think came through very well because I got a lot of questions around it. If you want a TV that looks like a picture frame, this is a great TV. If you want anything else, this is probably not the TV you want. If you want a great movie theater experience, I would probably get a different TV. It's really what you prioritize. What is more important to you? If it's all about aesthetics, then this is great. That's what this TV is. If it's about video quality or um, you know something like that, th then I you're gonna basically be compromising with this TV and trying to work around something. 
um, your audio setup or how you mount it or whatever. People ask me, can you put a Visa mount on here? Absolutely, but it doesn't look like a picture frame then because it comes off the wall. Uh, people ask me, can you mount it in a corner? Yeah, but would you hang a picture frame in the corner? Like that doesn't make sense, right? So you've got to really think about would I hang a picture frame there? Then this TV probably makes sense. You can work on hiding the cable and, and go with that. If you're really looking for a great TV experience first and foremost, and you're trying to make it look like a picture frame later, probably not the thing. Okay, I've had it for eight months. Let's talk about some of the regrets. 2020's version, I have the 2019 version. The 2020 version improved the contrast on it. It added HDMI 2.1 and 10-bit color. People had asked about that. Now, there's four HDMI ports on it. Only one of them has the HDMI 2.1. Why is that important? It's important for the Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5, any kind of gaming content like that. Supports 120 hertz, it supports AMD FreeSync. So all of that is in the 2020 model. The 2019 model had the AMD FreeSync, but not all of the adaptive stuff um, that comes with HDMI 2.1. Now, since I'm talking about the 2020, what about the 2021? CES 2021 just happened. They announced that they're still making frame TVs and they're actually even improved them quite a bit. They made them thinner, so there's a much thinner version of it. Also, there's a 43 inch that can be in portrait or landscape mode. That means it can rotate uh, to be vertical. So that way if you have vertical artwork you wanna show or vertical pictures, you can show those and then rotate it and have it be a TV. On the 2020 model, apparently a 32 inch did this. I wasn't aware of that until I read about the CES announced. So something to know about the new ones. The other thing they added for the 2021s, they added five different types of frames with some bezels, some third party stuff is coming out and there's uh, different colors, five different colors now. I got a lot of questions about the artwork. Where do I get my artwork? I get it for my Dynaframe project, I get it for here. The thing about the artwork is I get it off the internet with image searches that are specifically targeted for 4K content. And I'll show you what that looks like. Basically you go to your search engine of choice and you're gonna add specific things on the end of your search term to look for a uh, correct resolution for 4K images. I like to go to wallpaper sites also because they typically have really good wallpaper for fandoms of stuff I'm into, very easily searchable for categories. You take those, you can download them to a USB drive, plug that in, and then you have to import them from the USB drive to the screen. It's just the way that that's done. All right, quick questions. Let's see how fast I can get through these. Does it get hot? Mine doesn't. Does the voice assistant work hands-free? It can, and in the 2020 model, the Amazon voice assistant and Google voice assistant are available. Why are you out of bananas? I have a two-year-old, she eats bananas. How many degrees does it pull off the wall? I've got about a 10 degree pull down on mine. Does the, the one connect cord come in different colors? No, comes in clear. What bezel colors does the 2019, 2020 come in? Black, white, a light wood, and a dark wood. Does it come with a bezel? No. Can you get the serial number from the UI? Yes, but the reason I said that you should get off the back of the TV before mounting it is because if you mount it and the TV doesn't turn on, then it doesn't matter if you can get it from the TV's UI. You can't get to it anyway. This happened to me, that's why I mentioned get it from the back before you mount it. What's the white line in the video? Good question, let me show you. <laughs> I'm going into my art mode and here's some of the photos I have here. Here's my USB drive that's plugged in. If I go over the USB drive, here's this artwork that's on that USB drive. If I select one of these and I click OK, it previews it. While it's previewing it, there's a white line that goes across the top. That's a timer letting me know it's previewing it. I cannot set that as my background off the USB drive. I have to copy it off the USB drive into the internal memory. You do there, if I go save, then I can pick which ones I want. And then I say save to my frame and it copies them over. See, it takes a while. Does it have dual band Wi-Fi and five gigahertz? It has 802.11ac, that's the most I can tell you for that question. Is it a 10-bit panel, 120 hertz with HDMI 2.1? On the 2020, absolutely, but only one input is HDMI 2.1. Can you use Bluetooth out to get Dolby Atmos off the device? Not from what I've seen, Crutchfield and the Best Buy site both have reviews from Samsung reps that say that the Bluetooth out will not give you uh, anything except for stereo fidelity. Why do I point the remote at the TV when I use it? Habit. Okay, so I wanna show what this experience looks like. 
Here is screen mirroring. If you click here, you see the TVs that show up that have um, mirroring enabled. I click on the frame there. And then my phone's on my frame. So now I can scroll through videos and such on my phone. These are the replicates. These are the little replicate arcades I have. And I can scroll through and control the TV with what's shown on my phone. That's a great way to show your photos. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is show the SmartThings app and we're gonna show how this works with the TV. So I'm gonna click on 65 inch frame TV and now I've got a full remote here. I can say show more and I can actually control the TV. I can take it out of art mode by clicking the art mode button here. And now I can actually go left and right and control the TV via various things. I can go to home. Now, if I click on art mode here, I can say add my photos. And what happens is if you select m multiple, you can say create collage. And then here's your triptych, how this goes. Here's the different mats, the square and different. And it's gonna do this based on what you select. So for instance, if I only select two and I say create collage, then I get a different triptych mat here. And if I say next, I can select some colors. And then I say set on the frame. And up here on the frame here, we should see it's saving. Now it's been saving for probably 10 seconds. It says that collage has been set on the frame. And now I can say view. And there we go. We've created a collage on the frame that looks like uh, basically a matte photo. I'm gonna show you how to get a slideshow on this TV. I had a lot of questions about that too, because the concept of the art frame, people wanted that to be a slideshow and it's not. The art frame is the mode you go into between when you're watching TV and before it turns itself off, when you've left the room and it's just ambient in the room. The slideshow, if you wanted to actually do a slideshow, it has an app for that. It's over here in source of all things. So you go left to sources, you go up, here's your sources you can switch to. And what you do is put a USB drive in. And when you select that USB drive, here's the artwork that I've got on that USB drive. You can filter it, videos, photos, or music. So you can show all your fear media on here. And then you can sort by title or date. This to me is how you would do a slideshow effectively on this device. You can add music, you can change the, the dissolve effect, you can change the slide times and so on. It's under sources, it's something I didn't know about until recently. Okay. If you have a Windows or Android device, you're gonna use a technology called Miracast. For Windows, I can hold down the Windows and hit the P key brings up this UI here, and if I say connect to a wireless display, you'll see it scan for displays, very similar to what the phone did. There's the frame showing up. If I click on that, and then we go up to the screen, we'll see that it knows which device is connecting and it's notifying. Now as in the Amazon Prime app, this will actually take over, and now this is my computer that's up on the screen. The nice thing about this is, this is what's called Miracast or Wi-Fi Direct, and the video is very clear and smooth when doing this. This means that if you have video apps on your computer that you wanna show, you can do that very smoothly on the frame. The next thing that I'm gonna show does not allow for smooth video, but it does allow for applications. The other nice thing about this is I have a keyboard and mouse right here on my laptop, and I can also do things like launch Visual Studio and do coding, I can launch PowerPoint, Word, whatever, and basically use the screen of the frame as a giant TV. I'm gonna close this video out with one more demo of something that I had never seen anyone talk about. I didn't know it was possible. It's not specific to this TV, like much of this, this is probably in all Samsung TVs, but it's a remote desktop app that's in there that will work with Windows and Macs uh, over OS X 10.5 using VNC. Doesn't work with Linux though. However, if you remote into a Windows machine, you can then VNC into Linux. I did find that out when I was doing some Raspberry Pi work. I'm gonna show you a demo of this right now because it, uh, it kind of blew my mind and it makes any room that has one of these televisions or probably any Samsung television, a room where you can use it as a computer. 
For this next demo, I'm going to use a Bluetooth keyboard that's got a trackpad. This one's very thin. It's by a company called Fenty, and I've already paired it with the frame over Bluetooth. So what I'm going to do is go up to the frame, and I'm going to hit home on the remote, and then go over to the sources section. When I go up and I go back over to this remote access and click on it, I get three options. The screen sharing or wide eye is what I just showed with the laptop going up to the screen. For Office 365, that's a browser based one for accessing Office documents remotely. For this remote PC one, this is actually going to use either remote desktop or VNC if you're on a Mac, as long as you're on OS X uh, 10.5 or later. I've got a profile here for a PC and now I'm going to enter my password. Once I've entered my password and hit connect, this actually remotely connects up to a machine upstairs. And now I have that full access to that PC on this screen with this very thin keyboard. Thank you so much for your support, your kind messages and comments. If you have questions, leave them below. I've been answering comments for eight months in the last video. I made this video. I will continue to answer questions on this TV for as long as people are interested in it because um, that's why my channel's here. It's here to help the community. So thank you so much. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. Until next time. Washing, watching dishes. Another thing I want to talk about is who this TV is designed for. I think it's really important. If you're looking at this TV, dude, I'm, I'm filming. Stop chasing the microphone. Stop.